folks, Nathan the Jukebox here with another quick album review, and today I wanted to talk about the new fat dog record, Wolf. In an era of British music that has more often than not seen the underground be represented by the artsy, like Black Country New Rogue, the post-punk adjacent, like Dry Cleaning, or the highly technical and outright experimental, like the now disbanded Black Midi R.I.P., Fat Dog represents something that is entirely different, whereas their peers make use of an intentionally cold and dialed-in style, the new rave kind of sounds that make up the bulk of Fat Dog's influences are entirely unique from that. This is one of several qualities that allows the otherwise imperfect Wolf to stand out as a fresh face and fresh-sounding debut for a fairly unique-sounding band. Wolf is primarily based around synth-based influences with some light punk tones to go alongside it, allowing for this sort of dancey sort of punk feel to it, which is really nice to see as it's something that is always interesting to me and it's very nicely executed here as everything is allowed to be significantly more colorful and confident than many other bands within their field that tend to go in the more art school kind of direction, which is perfectly fine and respectable in its own right, but in a sea of bands like that that are active and specifically coming out of the UK at the moment, it's really nice to see a band like Fat Dog do things in a completely different style while also maintaining that same fairly experimental tone and energy to them. And I mean, hey, even still, some of those more experimental and jazz-adjacent tendencies are s somewhat present here on Wolf, especially with the kind of windmill scene embracing a lot of those jazz influences with a variety of different bands. It's no surprise that there are a couple moments here or there on Wolf that do feel more in line with that kind of sound. In particular, Morgan Wallace's very low-key saxophone work on the great track Closer to God, for example, being a highlight of that. But even still, those aforementioned tracks, they still have a ton of electronic influences. And those electronic influences are what make this a truly singular album for the present moment. The synth leads on cuts like All the Same, for example, are striking, they're punchy, they're catchy, in a way that allows Fat Dog to massively stand out from their peers, with layering that gives the listener reason to return for further analysis of the soundscapes that are being provided here, and they never really manage to overshadow or undo the more naturally rough and tumble nature of Fat Dog's over energy that's found at the band's core. This edge nonetheless never really prevents the band from crafting a catchy chorus or bridge, something that one could argue is legitimately the best quality of the record overall. Songs like Running and Wither, for example, have choruses that will swim around in your brain long after the brief 33-minute runtime of this record has come and gone, and the world largely has vocals Joe Love's frantic and impassioned vocal performances to thank for that. On tracks like the album opening Vigilante, for example, Love really acts as one of the most charismatic front vocalists of the entire windmill scene, the entirety of the UK in general at the moment even. I mean, generally speaking, there's just some absolutely phenomenal vocal performances here that, while never traditionally technical by any means, and that isn't really something I would expect from a record like this, they nonetheless manage to be extremely passionate and energetic in a way that suits not only the music, but also suits a world of underground tones that tend to kind of go for a more subtle direction. Seeing things be taken in a very punk forward, very heavily energetic stylistic direction like this in the vocal work, it's really nice to see. The rest of the band put forth some really strong instrumental work as well. I mean, the keyboard work of Chris Hughes and the previously mentioned Morgan Wallace are the obvious names to drop considering their importance in developing the synth-based sounds on Wolf, but at the same time, drummer Johnny Hutchinson as well as bassist Ben Harris provide a really solid background rhythm section for a band that manages to hold things down despite a group like this being heavily based around these raw club-like bits of energy. The only true qualm I could cite myself as having with Wolf is the production, which I think more often than not feels a bit too compressed for its own good. On one hand, it's nice to have two genuinely notable producers backing up a record with a promising sound like this, 
Those producers being none other than Jimmy Robertson and James Ford, who, if you don't know, you may be familiar with unknowingly. For example, Robertson has worked with artists like Caro Caro Benito in the past, and Ford is a staple producer of the alternative side of British popular music, most noted for his longtime collaborations with the Arctic Monkeys, as well as his membership of the Alex Turner side project, The Last Shadow Puppets. Both have been on kind of a roll so far this year as well, with records like Fontaine's DC's Romance, Beth Gibbons' Lives Outgrown, and The Last Dinner Party's Prince to ecstasy all having involvement from one or both of them but here fat dog they just sound a bit too compressed for the overall sound that they have some may personally enjoy this for the EBM influences of the record finding that somewhat suitable for them but one cannot help but feel that things would have been ever so slightly more gripping if there was just a bit more looseness behind the scenes in particular, the production kind of negatively affects the slower tracks here like I Am The King and Clowns, namely, which are songs where the energy is dialed back ever so slightly, but it becomes significantly more noticeable because these songs are left to wallow in some interesting songwriting and solid performances without much to highlight those qualities from an auditory perspective. And that isn't to say that we'll feel sonically stagnant or anything like that. The sheer energy and ambition of Fat Dog undoubtedly prevents that, but at the same time, the production still just leaves the album feeling a bit stuffy sounding for what is an otherwise raw listening experience. Slight issues relating to the production aside, Wolf is just about as good as it gets for most artists' debut studio album. Fat Dog are an undeniably distinct band in the context of the modern British underground, and they execute these heavy techno-influenced grooves with such reliability that it isn't hard to understand why they've quickly developed a pretty major cult following that has been hyping up this album for some time now. And while it is certainly way too early to say anything about Fat Dog or how they may be perceived in the future or what they have in store, anything like that, Wolf is the kind of album that makes you wonder if this is the first steps of a potentially iconic indie band, or at the very least, one that will do some pretty great things in the future. I can hope, at the very least. I'm going to give this record three and a half stars out of five. And with that being said, that is the end of this quick album review. Thanks for watching The Infinite Jukebox, and I'll see you in the next one.